Welcome everyone uh, to this video where I'll be introducing you to Sumo Simulator and discuss the ingredients needed to develop a microscopic traffic simulation uh, using this open source tool. While I won't be able to cover every aspect, uh, my intention is to share my experience and work that I have done. Based on that, I provide some insights for those with a data set looking to create a traffic simulation using Sumo or those who want to transfer an existing simulation may be done in another simulation platform to Sumo. So let's get started. So basically to first to start uh, with a simulation uh, you need to have a network right so then you need to uh, create uh, or generate uh, traffic flows. So in my case, I have divided it to two segments. The first one is general traffic and the other one is uh, bus traffic or so like public transport traffic. Then later, finally, once you have uh, all the elements, uh, you can basically run the simulation. So let's go with each of these steps and understand uh, a bit more in detail so that we have a good understanding how to uh, get or how to get these uh, data to your work. Let's start with the network preparation part. Um, so basically uh, Sumo, once you install Sumo, Sumo has a, another sort of a uh, sort of a script or like an app called OSM Web Wizard. What OSM Web Wizard does is uh, once you open it, it will sort of prompt you to a web browser uh, with OpenStreetMaps on where you can search for any location on the OpenStreetMap and search it. So it will sort of display that particular area on the map which you can uh, use in the select area tick box. You can select a particular area that you are interested in and then download it. So before downloading, of course, you can further sort of remove or untick unnecessary road segments in the network and you can get the required or like the you are interested uh, road network to uh, or sort of download it. But obviously, this is uh, there are certain errors. It's not always perfect. So sometimes you need to check for the the lane count whether the lane count is correct, uh, whether there are unnecessary U-turns on the network, and whether the connections are right. So a bit of uh, work to be done. So you may have to delete uh, unwanted edges uh, in some cases. So once you spend some good time with it uh, you you can be satisfied that you have a, a good network but before so you don't need to start from scratch you can basically start from the open street map network and then build or like develop or refine it on top of that so this is one of the network that i have created or using uh, open street map so i have refined or refined it or like remove a lot of unnecessary edges so that I have only this corridor that I wanted to simulate. Uh, so this edits can be done by net edit, which is also installed to Sumo once you do, do the installation. So it has all the tools that are required for you to edit the network. So once the network is ready, you need to obviously add the bus stops. Uh, so so usually uh, it is better to get some uh, local data to towards this or as you can go check in Google Maps and check the actual latitude and longitude of the bus stops if this kind of information is not available. And once you have that kind of information at hand, you can uh, start building those bus stops uh, to or like on the net edit uh, or else uh, you can start adding those bus stops using net edit. 
so uh, once you start adding those uh, it will be saved to as an additional file uh, which will be look which will look something like this so it's all the bus stops that you create uh, it uh, it records a unique bus stop ID you have to give this actually and the actual name of it you have to give and based on your click location it will identify uh, which lane the bus stop is in and the relative position with respect to that lane so obviously then uh, you can change these values and uh, give uh, set the exact length of the bus stop or like approximate length of the bus stop and uh, its relative position you can uh, check so likewise for all the bus stops in your particular study area you have to uh, do this exercise and get all the bus stops ready so once you do that uh, you can sort of uh, can see all the bus stops added for example in the previous network that i have shown i have added the bus stops so once you add the bus stops then of course you need to there are a lot of signalized inter intersections there could be a lot of signalized intersections in your network so you need to think of adding uh, those signal timings as well so obviously if you can get access to uh, some local authority data that would be the best way to go forward but in my case uh, i went to each of those junctions that i was interested in and then uh, took a video recording uh, at a morning peak and then uh, sort of summarize them into an excel file so that i can uh, use that file as my base to uh, update an xml file so this is the tl logic uh, xml file you have to define uh, this is one sample of it so uh, so for a given cluster or like a junction you have to do this exercise so there are different types or three different types of uh, signal timing in sumo that is one is static and the other one is actuated and the other one is delay based so in my case i have used delay based one uh, and then once you if you want to uh, define that you need to uh, define a delay based signal timing you have to define some additional parameters and then uh, you need to uh, basically define the uh, signal timing as well for each phases so likewise you have to do this exercise for all the uh, intersections or signalized intersections that you have in your network so once you do that uh, the network preparation stage is pretty much done but of course based on your uh, work you can think of other elements to be added to your network uh, but then uh, you need to add uh, traffic flows or like a vehicle demand so first thing that we need to think about uh, when adding this kind of vehicle demand is those vehicle characteristics and represent uh, mix how we can represent those vehicle characteristics and uh, mix so there's another additional file type uh, you can define uh, which is uh, go which goes as v type distribution or vehicle type distribution so you can have uh, a vehicle type distribution and set set it so based on the observed data that you have you can define uh, the vehicle types that are available in your network and uh, the probability which means uh, what is the actual uh, share of those vehicles so in this case uh, a car whole accounts for 34.17 percent of the total traffic of the general vehicle and then you can define certain other para parameters by default sumo has default values for these uh, but of, of course it's good to uh, check with the local context and update those values uh then obviously you can define uh, different uh, vehicle types uh so in my case i have shown here um cars and motorcycles but uh, the list can goes on go on uh, depending on the number of dip different vehicle types you have so based on that different types you can uh, define uh, 
also its acceleration deceleration values uh, maximum speeds and so on and so forth and then once you create uh, or like once you are done with uh, the vehicle types definition uh, probably you will have these kind of secondary data uh, sources for you to uh, sort of uh, as the starting point uh, for you to access or like get the values for the traffic demand so in this case uh, you have for each r uh, for a given junction for each different movement types what are the total number of vehicles that have been counted for an hour for an hour right so this uh, this has to be transformed uh, into a sumo uh, friendly format or like a format which sumo understands but uh, from uh, this uh, so from that you need to transform it to uh, uh, in this case you have since you have uh, from a given edge to another edge count or like a edge relation so you need to define an edge relation file in sumo so uh, in in sumo uh, documentation which is very rich documentation um, you can visit their website and uh, search for these and you can find working examples or like some samples which you can uh, copy and sort of amend to your requirement so in this case basically what we are saying is from uh, this edge to uh, this edge the vehicle count is 16 for this so this is uh, for a given uh, interval let's say 6 a.m to 7 a.m you can define it and again you have to define it to 7 a.m to 8 a.m and based on the number of intervals that you want to simulate you can add this um, and then you have to do this for basically all the edges where you have actual traffic counts right uh, then uh, you need to once you've done that or once you have defined the general vehicles you can uh, also think of representing uh, the bus uh, trips now there could be a lot of uh, bus routes in the study area that you are concerned in or like uh, different buses may have different uh, stopping patterns different routes or buses might stop at different bus stops and uh, their dwell times might be vary so you might have to uh, get access to that data uh, what is their headway uh, or whether it, it follows a particular timetable so there are a lot of different data that you need to collect uh, in in my case i sort of uh, went with uh, sort of uh, the headway and uh, the dwell time now obviously there are, since there are a lot of uh, bus trips that could occur in your network these kind of files are not encouraged to generate manually so you can uh, generate a python script or like a, a particular script on your particular uh, in any programming language to generate uh, this kind of uh, trips for buses so first basically what you have to do is you have to define the buses so there are different types of bus operations are there so in my case we had two uh, types of bus operations and once you define that uh, you can uh, sort of uh, program a, using a script you can generate these bus trips so basically what this bus trip need to have is a unique id and what is the vehicle type and in which second it enters to the simulation and from which edge to which edge it basically traveling uh, also you can define a route or intermediary uh, edges as well so inside that inside the bus trips you need to define uh, the stop sequence uh, which bus stop it stops and how long it stops so usually uh, these it would be better if these values can be uh, sort of gathered from a survey uh, uh, or else uh, you can assume values 
using a certain distribution and uh, do it uh, then finally uh, you need to uh, finalize or finalize the simulation or like run the simulation so basically once you have those uh, input files you need to transform it to different other file types inside sumo that is can be done by uh, scripts or python scripts that are available with sumo once you install it uh, but that we can discuss in a, another separate video in this video i wanted to show you the different types of inputs that are needed uh, to for you to build the simulation so once you have let's say once you have those all these inputs and you have uh, sort of transformed it to uh, sumo friendly formats uh, once you have everything you can combine all those files together in a configuration file in sumo so inside that configuration file you can uh, set give the network and all the particular additional files so the vehicle type distribution bus stops uh, the bus trips files the traffic uh, or like signal timing plans uh, and then uh, and also you can define the simulation outputs that you want to generate so that later you can analyze them so you can try out different scenarios and compare results so then basically that you have to do it inside a configuration file so basically this is the uh, what I wanted to discuss in this video so what are the inputs that you need uh, in order to build a working simulation model in sumo so uh, do let us or know if you have any questions uh, we'll be happy to uh, answer uh, we'll see you on another video thank you very much